My name is Sandy Hudson, and uh, I'm so happy to be with you folks today. I am the founder of Black Lives Matter in Canada. Uh, I do a little podcast called Sandy and Nora Talk Politics. And generally, I have been involved in activism for a really long time. And so I'm here to tell you folks when it was that I first realized that I could change the world. And as I often do, I'm going to break the rules a little bit and maybe tell you two stories, not just one, but two stories about how I realized um, that I had some power to change the world. And we all do. So hopefully this helps you folks realize that same power within yourselves. Okay. So imagine this, I am in undergrad, my first year of undergrad, I had decided to start post-secondary education uh, in the computer science program. I was thinking I was going to be a software engineer. And you might think that's unexpected, but in high school, I was kind of a polymath and I was trying to decide, do I want to do journalism or do I want to do programming? And I thought to myself, whatever I get the highest mark in, that's going to be my future and did really well in computer programming. And so that's where I went. That's where I ended up. And while I was in the program, I figured out something that I didn't know before going into university as uh, someone from a, uh, a first generation student, as they call it. I just didn't have all of the information about what would happen after my first year. And so I was told that the tuition for my second year was going to be about double what it was in my first year. If I wanted to continue on in computer science and I was stunned, I didn't know about that. And I was already receiving the maximum amount of OSAP. I already had three jobs. I was already falling asleep in my computer logic class after having spent a really long night being a cashier at, at Zeller's. Uh, it, was, it was really frustrating. And I thought, ah, how am I going to do this? My entire future is thrown up uh, into the air. So I thought, okay, I'll go to the Students' Union. I have heard that the Students' Union is a place where maybe they can find me a scholarship or a grant or figure this out for me in some way so I don't have to drop out of my program. Walk down to the Student Union office, feeling really nervous, hoping that maybe there was something there. And there was not. <laughs> I did not have any such scholarships or grants, but the person that I spoke to was like, what we do have is a rally coming up in uh, just a few weeks uh, to protest high tuition fees and to, to get the government to freeze tuition or reduce the fees. And I was like, uh, protest. Uh, okay, the, the only protest I'd ever been to at that point in my life uh, was in the year 2000, the Stop the War protests, the big ones that happened all over the, the world. And I was like, I, I just don't know about this. I'm not sure if this is going to be impactful in any way. I was very skeptical. And the person I spoke to was like, look, just why don't you come out to an organizing meeting? You, you, might, you might like what you see. You might want to even get involved and uh, become a volunteer. So I went to an organizing meeting. And this is like maybe three weeks out to the event. And there's maybe, maybe 10 people in the room. I was like, okay, so these 10 people are going to plan a protest that is then going to convince the government uh, to do something about fees. I was even more skeptical, but something in me kept going to these meetings. I didn't say much, it was really just observing. And then, the day of the rally came around. I think there was somewhere between five and 10,000 students out on the street. And I was like, how? How did those 10 people in a room get this many people to come out uh, and, and put boots on the ground and demand better from the government? And then shortly afterwards, a few days, I believe afterwards, the government announced, a two-year a two freeze on tuition fees. 
I was blown away. I was like, okay, you know, I may not be doing computer science, but I need to learn everything I can about how to wield power like that. I want to know how those few people in a room managed to convince the government and to convince uh, uh, policymakers that this change was necessary, that this change was possible, and to actually bring it about. Fast forward to 2014, after all of that time, and uh, from about 2003, 2004 to 2014, I became a student activist and I was doing a lot of student activism work. And in 2014, I was also reeling from the news of Michael Brown's murder by uh, the police officer, Darren Wilson, uh, in Ferguson, Missouri. I was reeling from the news of Jermaine Carby's murder from Officer Ryan Reed in Peel Region. And, you know, I wasn't seeing a lot of, uh, of, of solidarity actions being planned in Toronto. And everyone who I knew was part of the Black community was asking one another, like, where are these solidarity actions? When is it going to happen? Um, what can we do? How can we support? And I knew that there were activists in the United States uh, from Black Lives Matter who had called on people all over the world to do solidarity actions uh, in November. And I'm, I'm looking around and I'm asking my friends and we cannot find anything. And in one of these conversations, which I was having with my brother, he was like, yeah, do, have you heard anything? Do you know maybe Dundas Square or something? And I said, no, I, I haven't heard anything. I'm really disappointed. Like I can't, I can't find uh, a solidarity action anywhere in Toronto. And then he says to me, well, yeah, I, I don't know what you're waiting for though. Like you have all of these skills, uh, you know, don't you think you could plan something? And that was like really quite a challenge to me. I was like, you know, why? is it that I'm waiting for somebody else to do this? Like I really, for some reason thought, you know, my space is student stuff and someone else will come along and do this stuff. But no, that, and that challenge really challenged me to see that sometimes we really are the ones that we are waiting for. And so, and that's a quote by June Jordan, a, a black feminist poet. And uh, I, I contacted all of the people that I knew who, for black organizers on Facebook. And I said, hey, would you be willing to, to help support a solidarity action in Toronto? People were like, hell yeah. And we had about two days to plan something. And then we started getting contacted by people all over the country. In those two days, you know, I'm an experienced activist. I know what we planned for. We planned for maybe um, a, a rally that would bring out 50 people. On the day of the rally, 3,000 people, over 3,000 people showed up uh, to protest outside the U.S. consulate. Um, the, the killing of Michael Brown and also the killing of Jermaine Carby. And there were solidarity actions from Vancouver to Ottawa to Halifax and in places in between. And I really, you know, uh, that, that action really taught me uh, to never limit myself, that I could always have some sort of powerful impact uh, on uh, our ability to change the world.